A car pulled over and I stepped back into the grass beside the road. Where are you going there, Johnny? Most times I dress all in black, just like Johnny Cash, cowboy in black, but, but my name is actually Jerry, not Johnny. Actually, it's Jerry, I said. Ah, to Tennessee. Well, I'm heading north. Tennessee is north, I said. I got in the car and I put my seatbelt on. Lots of people do not wear their seatbelts. Lots of people get thrown from cars and die in a piece of splintered branch halfway up a tree, or they are decapitated by having their head ground like an eraser against the asphalt. My uncle died that way. The shifter beside the steering wheel punched through to his heart. He should have been buckled up. He, he shouldn't have had his eyes closed. He, he should have been sleeping in a bed instead. And I missed him, but only for a moment. And then I allowed myself to go blank, to be reborn, to be in the moment, and the pain went away. Because the past is a fiction, a story that leads to the present, but it's not the, so what you doing out in the middle of the woods there? Someone drop you out? Yeah? I'm just waiting. I answered the questions in reverse order. If I were moving backwards through time, how would I know? Time's arrow would appear subjectively to move forward no matter which direction I was traveling. Maybe he's the one moving backwards. Maybe we're all jumbled up. Where are you trying to get to, he asked. He sounded funny, like, like he didn't really care. Wherever, Nashville, uh, I know people there sometimes. <laughs> Your friends move around a lot, do they? Uh, no, but I do, and, and sometimes when I come back, I don't, I don't know them very well, and then other times I, I, I trailed off. It's like you never left, he finished for me. I'd actually been about to say that sometimes I don't know them very well and sometimes they don't know me very well, but, but he seemed so comforted by this version of me that I wondered if maybe he had been right. I mean, maybe it was like I never left, or, or maybe, maybe they were the same idea because I never really knew anyone. I never bothered to know anyone. Maybe it was not always worth knowing. And we were both silent for a long while. The trees slid past the windows, time's arrow, entropy, forwards or in reverse. It was hard to say. It felt like we were a stationary point on a spinning ball. I mean, the whole world was moving beneath the wheels of the car. We were tiny, and the world was amazing in size. We were tiny, and the space around us was so empty. Do you, uh, do you give head, he asked me. I thought about it. <laughs> Sifting through memories, trying to decide. I remember giving head at least once. Were there other times? Because if there were, I might be able to establish a pattern of behavior around the act of giving head. I mean, if, if there were, then I could chart the progression of a trend and I could decide if this was a trait of mine. Defining oneself can be such a tricky proposition at times. I, I couldn't remember any other instances, though. There might be plenty. I mean, people can't remember, be expected to remember everything all the time. I mean, we're, we're fallible. <laughs> we're, we're easily distracted from reality. I don't think I do, I said. Well, if I see someone else, I may have to drop you off and then give them a ride instead, he said. <laughs> well, it's your car, I said. As far as you can take me, it's fine. Thanks. I took a moment. I took in his face, his hands, his skin. I watched. What's your name, I said. Dylan. I'm Jerry. I know. You said that already. <laughs> Do you have a bow, Dylan? He gave me a, a kind of a dark look like anger and a crinkle around his eyes, and then it faded like a shooting star, leaving the sky of his face smooth and unbroken by emotions. He was one of those people who are used to fading. They're part of the background, and you never notice them. They're, they're medium brown people with medium builds, medium hair. They're tan from working outside. They're nondescript. They're good at it. They're good at not being noticed. I mean, it's good to be missed. It's, it's good to be overlooked. It's safer that way. But the Dylan's eyes, they were this green, this weird startling green, some, some part of him that rebelled from birth against the idea of hiding in the background. Yeah, he said finally. I do. Is he a nice boy? He is nice. Dylan told me about this guy that he just started seeing, and, and we drove for a long time. It seems like nothing messes with people's heads more than sex. It makes them feel like they're crazy, crazy for feeling what the whole world feels on most days. People just they forget themselves. They, they feel alone. Forgetting, forgetting what's important to them. Forgetting can be good. I forget, I forget things all the time. I, 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 if I didn't forget, 
I'd have a head full of useless stuff all happening all at once. Like, like having all the stations on a TV tuned in at the same time, you'd either, be, you'd either be enlightened or crazy. It's like Jerry Springer and 12 Angry Men and Friends and the Simpsons and Law and Order all taking up space in your head all together at once. But, but sex, sex drives people crazy with this noise that is so loud that it drowns everything else out. I mean, sex sends you out to stand in clubs alone has you screaming idle conversation over music that's too loud at the bar, and you're waiting nervous at the coffee shop for that one girl to stop by. So you name the city Troy and the woman Helen, and you embark on strange trips up the interstate, hoping, searching, the, the seeking, the disappointment of the payoff. But then sex, it's not the payoff, is it? I mean, it's the hoping. Sex is just this justification that's wound inside this useless guilt like, like mealworms under your skin and an idea, an antiquated sin packed like grist into the sausage mess of the brain till we believe it because we believe whatever we're told. I mean, we have to. I mean, we're social animals. And so we know. We know that our wants make us perverse. And once we get it inside of our head that we're perversions, then, then we're just desperately screwed. I mean, we're desperate. And there was this otherwise shy and ordinary man. He's driving me where I want to go in the middle of the night. I mean, even though he'd rather be home, he'd rather be doing mundane little domestic things like, like arguing over who's going to take out the trash and, or being bored watching TV or, or setting aside books and, and look, locking the door for the night and, and, and shutting out the lights and, and crawling into bed and, and making these crude comments and cutesy, silly jokes. And then, then comes forgetting, real forgetting. Only it's OK now. So this is what it's supposed to be like. Now it's keeping out this noise. It's a white noise that it's canceling the sounds of the chaos in the world. It's not just screaming louder than everything else. I tell Dylan this theory of mine about the noise and the TVs and the canceling and the taking out the garbage. I tell him, the world is an illusion. It's a fickle fiction. We can decide to believe it or rewrite it. And he nods and says that he understands it. I think he does, but I don't know. I can't tell from his face but the noise is still screaming in his head. I can hear it in his body language. It emanates from his shyness. He, he wants to be home, to have a home, a, a normal little home with papers and signatures all around it, but instead he has the open wailing mouth in his chest and I want to touch his chest there where I know that it is tightening, the tension rolling out along his arms, but I don't. I'm suddenly afraid of all the things I know about him, but I didn't mean to know, of all the things that we have in common Maybe it's better when I, I didn't bother to know anyone, better for them and better for me, and we should be allowed not to know each other, to be islands, to be without empathy. But it's too late for that. I mean, we know each other now. I mean, he sees me, and I'm seeing him, and I, I can't be undone. And I touched his chest, and it was just a test. And I can't remember why I was so afraid. Jonathan Standiford. <laughs>